So, a couple months ago, I saw on Southgate Amateur Radio Club, their website, they did something about smart speakers or Alexa in the ham shack. Rebecca and I have purchased a couple of Alexas. I don't know if that's Alexa. I don't think so. But have purchased a couple of those. We've also got a couple of Google Homes. I will admit, personally for us, we prefer Google. Google has a personality more so than Alexa does. Um, by the way, for today, I've changed her name to the other word, comp, because I didn't want her to answer every time I said Alexa during the presentation. And we'll get into how you can change the name a little bit. So this is Alexa in the ham shack. <clears throat> what is an Amazon Echo, which is what this little device here is? This is one of a few. So that's the Amazon Echo. There's a larger version, and there's a hockey puck version. And they also have some with uh, video capability. But it's a smart speaker. Which begs the question, what is a smart speaker? Per the tech industry, a smart speaker is a wireless speaker that has voice control commands built into it. So basically, if you shout at your speaker and get it to do something, it's probably a smart speaker. Or maybe haunted. Uh, you know. So far, there's tons of companies out there that have come up with these. And Amazon, Apple, Google, Microsoft, Ubi, Samsung tend to be the bigger players. But more companies are getting involved with this almost on a daily basis. That they are coming out. There's a picture of a few of those. You can see the hockey puck version of the Alexa. It's kind of the third one over there on the right. Or, yeah, heading to the right. And like I said, it's basically the size of a hockey puck. Names of Alexa. So that's why I just made the comment. There are different names for Alexa. They are Alexa. And these are the wake words. Google has their own wake words. Uh, Google would be Hey Google. And there's a couple other options there, but currently ours is called Hey Google. But back to Alexa, you've got Alexa, you've got Echo. You've got computer and Amazon that you can call this thing. I just hit the microphone shut up button so I could get past that. How much does a smart speaker cost? Guesses? Some of you have some. 35. 35. What did you say? You can range up to $399. Google has one out there. And remember, they're heavy. It's a big one. It's heavy. It's a typo. Um, and remember, Google actually doesn't have a visual product yet. Theirs, you have to tie in some type of visual product with their device. Amazon does have a couple of products out there that are visual. What can you add to a smart speaker to also access? Doorbells with videos, thermostats, lights, garage doors, televisions, outlets, uh, toilet. I don't know why. I have no clue who thought that was a good idea. Unless, you know, it, it's somebody's mother who decided, you know, you guys always forget to flush the toilet. I want Alexa to, Alexa flush. Uh, you know, it could be that. Pardon me? Yeah, you, you couldn't mess with the party goers, especially if you allow drinking at your parties, you could have a good old time. The dangers of having a smart speaker. So, you know, there's a lot of conspiracy folks out there that are worried that they're always listening to you. And it actually is. Right now, it's currently listening for me to say that smart word. That's not Alexa. It's the other word. Um, and there was a research, a group of researchers, security researchers, the, that they posted, what's today? Today's 20, yesterday, it was in the news. They put out an app, or a skill is what they're called, um, that was a calculator school, skill. And this group was check, max, check marks. It was a calculator skill, just a basic skill. Doesn't require a lot of computing power to do the uh, calculator. For example, computer, 
What is the square root of 9? The square root of 9 is 3. That's what it was capable of doing. Math problems. Complicated math problems, but math problems. Except what this particular skill did, it didn't stop listening. It kept recording and dictating what you were saying right now and sending that as an email to the researchers. So they, now they knew what you were saying continually. And you'll see that the light ring went off. This skill, the light ring did not turn off because that's one of the indications that it's actively still listening for what you're saying. Something else they did with their little app though, if you tell it to, if you give it its keyword, computer, here in a second it'll probably ask me, what do you want? Sorry, I'm not sure about that. Okay, stop listening. Um, when you give it its wake word and then you don't say something, it gets your attention to say, you know, I'm still listening, did you need something? Some version of that. Yes, sir. So is the, is the uh, wake word stored locally or is that in the cloud? Um, I believe it is stored locally, but I can't swear to you on that. But that's a good thing. <clears throat> so, the wake, uh, but the wake word, it is continuing to listen after it did the calculation for you. It keeps listening. But what they did is, since it's supposed to add about 10 seconds, remind you I'm listening, you have to tell it what to say. So you would tell it, you know, I'm still listening, say that. What they told it to say was not a thing. They just put spaces in there. And that's exactly what it did. At 10 seconds, it would go and kept going. So if you were only paying attention to the fact that that blue ring was still there, you didn't realize that she was still listening, dictating, and sending an email off to researchers who were spying on you, making an eavesdropping device. Now these were ethical guys. When they put it out there, they did not put it out there for the general user to get hold of. It was specialized, only a couple people could get into it so that they could test it. And by the way, the Amazon folks have fixed that little glitch. That doesn't happen anymore for that one. But it was easy for them to do. It didn't take them long. There is the possibility for bad guys to be bad guys. So you have to keep that in mind. Oh, did they? Yeah. All right. Both Alexa and Google, I know, let you build your own skills. I've done one with Google. It doesn't quite do exactly what I wanted to do. What I, had, what I attempted to do was when I asked when is, a, when is field day, it would give me the date of field day and then calculate how many days from today till then. It would only do one of those commands at a time. So I'd have to ask the second command for the follow-up. For Alexa, I tried to get into their app today to do it. And what was I trying? Oh, I was trying to do the same thing, basically. And I kept getting an error pop up on me. So the technology is out there. You just have to massage it a little bit. And both of them are trying to let you build your own skills. There are some really nice skills that are built on the Google side. And there's several skills built on the Alexa side. There's people who can do it, no problem. And they've made it more user friendly so people like us, or people like me can do it. I'm not gonna say you guys are nearly as dumb as I am. I bring a whole new level of that. So what can you do with this? Wi-Fi devices? Or, uh, Pardon me? Yeah, they're wi built, wi yes. Wi is there any physical interface uh, at any point? Uh, like, is there a base station? No. So I brought this in today. The only thing that's plugged into this thing right now is the power. And then it's hooked up through, right now it's hooked up to Kevin's system, Kevin's phone, because it was arguing with my phone and my wife's phone. She can be like that. Not that I have seen. Now, like I said, more and more companies are coming forward, so no telling what they're coming up with. Things you can do with a, with a smart speaker. Listen to music, run your AV, check weather, check traffic, play a game, play a podcast, listen to news, book an Uber, watch a video. All for the low, low price of $39.99. Also, 
Alexa has approximately 25,000 skills in the U.S. that are built. And that's continually to grow. So lots of people are putting skills out there. Quizzes, tests, turning your lights on. This would be one of the things that I'd worry about. You can open your garage door. Okay, so bad guys being able to be bad guys, they get that figured out, open up your garage door, and there goes your car, whatever else. Now we're going to talk a little bit about some of the general skills this can do. <coughs> Computer, what time is it? It's 7.53 p.m. Okay, simple enough thing to do. You can set alarms with it. Computer, remind me in five minutes to get done with this. What's the reminder for? Hurry up. Okay, I'll remind you in five minutes. So we'll see what happens in five minutes. Um, you can cook with it. Computer, give me a recipe for chocolate chip cookies. Okay, for chocolate chip cookies. I recommend a top recipe called Best Chocolate Chip Cookies, which takes one hour to make. You can ask for more information or for more recipes. Say next. Computer, stop. You can set timers for that, like I've got a timer going now. And you can set multiple timers. So if you are cooking in the kitchen, as an example, and the potatoes need to be pulled up at this time, the turkey needs to come out at this time, the cookies at this time, you can set those multiple reminders for yourself. So are these apps that you have to purchase? Or <coughs> no purchasing. In the, uh, for these, these are not purchased. And if you come up, if you ask it to do something it does not know how to do, but there is a skill for it, it'll generally point out the skill that's capable of doing that. Also, there's a lot of online resources of, you know, people that are building skills. That's where I'd be a little cautious if, you know, you know, Johnny Boy says, hey, I built a skill that will do this. It'll run a calculator for you. Yeah. Yeah, okay, maybe you should be concerned with that. Um, it'll play games with you. Rebecca and I have played games with the Alexa before with the quiz. Again, we kind of like Google better, more personality to it. Um, Google, listen to CNN News. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oops. And it's called Computer, Listen to CNN News. CNN from TuneIn. Experiences I've had overseas have been in places that are very different. So while you're shaving, you, you can listen to the news in America in my own country with the same attitude. So what computer you, what stop. You can also tell it what you want to listen to. You can listen to Fox News, CNN. You can listen to uh, podcasts. And we'll get into a little bit more of that here in a minute. Get tomorrow's weather. If the audio screen says the word computer, does it recognize it? So here's one thing that they we were talking about this earlier. Um, Alexandra was pointing this out to me. So Alexa had a problem because there's tons of Alexa commercials out there. And during Alexa commercial, she started doing what was going on in the commercial. Kind of annoying. So what the companies have done is they have taken out a certain range of hertz for the bra. Uh, so now she realizes, oh, that's not a real voice. I can ignore that. So. No, no, no. It's listening so if the television says Alexa, it's going to say so missing a certain range. And that's how Alexa knows not to listen to it. So it's still playing everything on. And this plays better than my hockey puck because there's more speaker involved. But that's what they're doing to get around that. When, they, when it's one of the four key words, that's how they avoid that. Now, people are asking for, this kind of backtracks to the names, out on the um, blogs and the information, people are wanting to call these things other things. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, uh, I wouldn't want to call it a single syllable word like Jeeves, but my personal favorite would probably be Mycroft. I'm a big fan of Robert Heinlein, Mycroft Holmes, computer that ran Luna City. I would love to do that. But then you're going to get into the trouble again of any time the television or radio says Mycroft, Mycroft's going to start listening and trying to do whatever it's told to do at that point. 
Oh, this is interesting at times. It keeps pointing out to make sure that this has adult content. I've yet to hear adult content. Computer, be mean. As a noun, beam is usually defined as a signal transmitted along a narrow path. Computer, Guides stop. Airplane pilots in dark... It was doing this to me yesterday. Every once in a while, it doesn't hear me right. Computer, be mean. Sorry, I don't know that one. All right, she's going to be... What? I couldn't slow it to up. Oh, yeah. But it doesn't actually know that you're... We'll see. <laughs> All right, computer... Tell me a Star Trek joke. Start there. Did you know Kermit had a cameo on Star Trek? He was the captain's frog. See? This is a reminder. Hurry up. <laughs> and it should yell at me again. This is a reminder. Hurry up. Computer, stop. So yesterday when I was fighting with the be mean, it took, a couple times it took it first shot, no problem. A couple of other times it did take a little bit of time to get it convinced it, to be mean to me. She's got some really nasty comments. I'm trying to remember what, you know, you know, pardon me? Oh yeah, it's on my phone. Um, that is the other thing, you can track it on your phone. Yeah, there there was nothing between my ears. Isn't it a shame that my parents didn't have an abortion? Um, that's, yeah, yeah. It, she was she was very mean there. Amateur rate related skills, kind of more of why you guys are here. Computer, define amateur radio. Amateur radio is usually defined as the hobby or pastime, usually practiced by an enthusiast rather than a professional, that includes communicating worldwide by two-way radio and striving for receptions that are challenging, usually because of distance. Or, the hobby or pastime, usually practiced by Computer, an enthusiast stop. rather than... She gets long-winded. But if you're operating the radio and you get hold of a new call sign, computer, open QRZ. Computer, open QRZ. Welcome to QRZ. We you can ask me about FCC radio call signs. Who is KC9CIJ? The call sign KC9CIJ is registered to Rebecca J. Carroll. Would you like more details? Yes. Call sign KC9CIJ is registered to Rebecca J. Carroll. This is a personal use license for amateur. The license is active and expires on August 28, 2022. Computer open QRZ. Welcome to QRZ. You can ask me repetitive. about FCC radio call signs. Who is AA0Z? The call sign AAOZ is registered to Kyle T. Creek. Would you like more details? No. <laughs> AAOZ. Okay. Oh, shut up. AAOZ. She's got a little quirks there, something that they could tweak a little bit, because we know we say zero. But Alexa does not. Um, the resistor decoder. So open resistor decoder. Oh, wait. Computer, open resistor decoder. Welcome to Resistor Decoder. Read me the color bands of a resistor aloud, from left to right. When you are done, I will tell you that resistor's value. What are the colors on your resistor? Orange, white, yellow, gray. That is a 390K ohm resistor. Please note that this is not one of the standard EIA decade values for resistors. If you have another resistor to decode, read me the colors now or say cancel to exit. Same one backwards and see if she says to tell you to turn it over. <laughs> Gray, yellow, Please white. Please read the resistor colors aloud to me or say cancel. Gray, yellow, white, orange. That is an 84000M ohm resistor. Wow.
please note that this is not one of the standard DIA decade values or for resistors. Or somebody put one out there. If you have another resistor to decode, read me the colors now or say cancel to exit. We'll check the five band here. Orange, orange, white, I'm black. I'm sorry. I think you said check, which is not a valid color for a resistor band. Please tell me all the band colors again or say cancel to exit. Orange, orange, white, black, brown. That is a 339 ohm resistor. Please note that this is not one of the standard EIA decade values for resistors. If you have another resistor to decode, read me the colors now or say cancel to exit. Cancel. Goodbye. So, where did I go with that? Oh, what's in the news today? This is my settings for the Alexa. So when you have your app on your phone and you ask it what's in the news today, which we'll do in just a second, it starts going through the news that you want to hear. So I can tell it I want to hear Fox News or I can tell it I want CNN. I can tell it I want a blog. This one I focused on amateur radio stuff. So, And by the way, I haven't said this earlier. If you take a look at the top of this, and it's hard for most of you to see, there are four buttons up here, plus and minus, a dot, and then a speaker. The dot is the same as the wake-up word in this case. So, oh, by the way, sometimes you have to be real exact on what the verbiage is you use. That's why I keep looking back at the screen. What's in the news today? William, here's your flash briefing. From the American Radio Relay League Audio News. I'm Carla Pereira, KC1 HSX, and this is ARRL Audio News, your weekly summary of news, features, and opinion from ARRL Computer. headquarters in New Skip. Oh, it didn't like that one. I'm Carla Pereira, KC1 HSX. Computer. And this is a Next. In weather, in East St. Louis, it's 70 degrees Fahrenheit with clear skies and sun. Tonight, you can look for clear skies. Computer, with a stop. Low of four so she will go through all of the ones I have listed till I get bored or until my wife tells me to shut it up. One of the two. But she will go through and it, it will hold. I've seen somebody post that they've got like 20 different news services that it'll go through and it reads it off based on what you wanted to listen to. You notice when we first started, it said William. It knows your voice. So if Rebecca comes up to it, does the same thing, it will read off to her what she has requested on her app. So it's kind of a nice feature that that has. Now for training. It'll go through the phonetic alphabet. And I think um, Rebecca and I were talking about this a couple of days ago. Computer, open phonetic alphabet. It's got three different games. I will help you learn the phonetic alphabet, which is a set of code words to replace letters when spelling. It is commonly used in radio communications. Now, tell me what I should do. First, if you would like me to read the phonetic alphabet, say read alphabet. Second, if you would like me to quiz you on single letters, say start quiz. Finally, if you want me to challenge you by testing you on six digit call signs, say start call sign quiz. Start quiz. Your first letter is P. Papa. Correct. The next letter is X. Xylophone. Wrong. Don't worry, you'll get it next time. The correct answer was X-ray. Remember, the phonetic code for X is X-ray. The next letter is N. November. Correct. The next letter is D. Computer, stop. So Goodbye. It'll... Be sure to come back and practice more soon. <laughs> I told you she's wordy. Um, so she'll go through and she'll just keep calling those off to you. She'll also give you groups of five where you have to call them back. A couple times when I was messing around with it, it gave me Z, it gave me V, and it was hard for me to distinguish the two. I had to get closer to catch it or have it louder. And so I got them wrong when I wasn't even trying. It was kind of embarrassing. But you notice that it is in a teaching mode. It told you twice what the right um, word was for that particular letter. 
Something else that is of interest to ham radio operators. Matter of fact, this is coming up tomorrow, I think, if we ask. Open Space Station. Welcome to Space Station. You can ask where the International Space Station is now, when it will be over your city, or who's in space right now. Computer, when will the International Space Station be over St. Louis? The International Space Station will be passing above St. Louis on Saturday, April 28th at 10.26 a.m. That's cool. So, and cool. if I understand right, I, I don't have any other satellites that I know of right now off the top of my head. You can ask it about other satellites, too. Ask for the azimuth. Pardon me? Ask for the azimuth. So that's going to get into one of the problems that they're building into it now, and I think they're going to have a release soon. She doesn't have much of a memory. That's why when you, you've you heard me say computer again, darn it, shut up. Okay, good. That when I've opened up one of those skills again or told it to go into, it repeated the same thing it just told me. Not much of a memory. Google has a better memory and would do better with that because if you, once it gave you the information on the space station and then you asked it, what is the azimuth? It'll, it knows that you're, where you're flowing with that conversation. And it would, if it has the ability, if somebody has put the skill in there, it will give you the azimuth for that. Let's see. This is a long one. We're going to cut it short, too. But it's of interest. Ask propagation report for the band status. Here is the propagation report from N0MBH from Saturday, April 28, 2018 at 12 a.m. Today expect 80 and 40 meters to be poor, 30 and 20 meters to be fair, 17 and 15 meters to be poor, and 12 and 10 meters to be poor. Tonight expect 80 and 40 meters to be fair, Computer 30 and stop. 20 meters. And she'll go through all the bands and let you know what their conditions are going to be based on the last... Um, bit of information she has built into the skill. So it was based on last Saturday. Tomorrow they will update that information and she'll start going with that. I'm going to skip over the amateur radio license classes. She knows what they are. She can tell, you know, she'll tell you what they are. But computer, run Q code. Welcome to News Talk 96.5, KPEL. <laughs> oh. And the ball hit foul outside of third. Oh, wait a second. Maybe we one need to listen. And one Computer, stop. Please said before the game. Let's try that again. Run Q code. Here are a few interesting stories. A golfer removed his pants for... <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Here are a few interesting stories. Computer, a stop. A removed his pants for Computer, what stop. Computer, stop. a legitimate reason. Boy, she is being cantankerous. She is a feminine third person, singular Computer. personal pronoun in modern Stop. English. That he had four pitchers. That's just back to the game. Computer. But Cancel. Besides the starter, Colton Schmidt, who was a poor available tonight. Computer. Mm -hmm. Stop. Sorry, I could not understand. <laughs> there we go. All right, let's try the run Q code again. Run Q code. Sorry, I'm not sure about that. Computer, run Q code. Here's a Q code, QRY. What is my turn? Computer, run Q code. Here's a Q code, QSB. Are my signals fading? So she'll just start going through random Q codes and giving you what the definition is of that Q code. Yeah, depending. <laughs> yes, Mark. Will she do Morse code? Um, yeah, Rebecca has been doing them. Have you been doing it with Alexa or have you been? I did it with her a couple of times. Okay. Do you remember what that one was or do I have it in here? Well, 
Well, we know. Oh, yeah. Um, so it played the word, and I'm thinking, okay, well, it can't be this word. I, so I had to repeat it. And she repeated it for me two or three times, and I kept coming up with the same word. And then she finally told me I was an idiot because I didn't answer the question, and the word was hell. <laughs> but I'm thinking, okay, it cannot be. That is the first word, so I must have done something wrong, but I didn't. She's me. She, yeah, she's me. <laughs> So let's, I don't remember what the skill was for Morse code. Computer, run a Morse code quiz. Do you mean Morse code flashcards? Yes. I will give you a letter in Morse code. Tell me what the letter is. Let's begin. What is dot dash? Anybody? Dot dash? A. A. That answer is wrong. The correct answer is A, your score is zero. What is dot, dot, dot? <laughs> Computer, stop. Thanks for playing Morse code flashcards. Now, uh, yeah, it, it's a low one. Um, but that brings up another point with it. So this one, you heard your score is zero. Some of the skills that are out there, They've got them where it will remember what your score is, so you can come back to it. I've said that Alexa doesn't have much of a memory, but the skill has been built in to have that memory a little bit. So there are some of them out there. There is another one called Morse Coder, where you tell it a word and it'll repeat it back to you in Morse Code. Computer, open Morse Coder. Welcome to Morse Coder. Let me encode, spell, or exercise you some Morse code. Dog. Listen carefully. Well? <laughs> Sorry, this was not correct. Do you want to try it again? No. <laughs> no. Do you want to give it another try? No. Not really. Do you need another try? Maybe try it in worse code. Computer, stop. That's wrong. You made one attempt to solve zero out of one Morse code. Oh, she, That's I've, a final score of zero. Computer, stop. I think... I, sorry, I could not understand. The ambient noise is getting to her a little bit. Yes, sir? What about converting uh, Fahrenheit to centigrade? Oh, yeah, absolutely it'll do that. Um, so, yeah, if you're talking to somebody on the air and they tell you how much they just paid for their latest rig, it'll convert money for you. It'll convert Celsius and Fahrenheit and vice versa. Computer, what is 98.6 Fahrenheit in Celsius? Sorry, I don't know that. <laughs> Computer, convert 98.6 Fahrenheit to Celsius. Sorry, I don't know that one. Computer, convert 37 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. 37 degrees Celsius is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> so they, they only wrote it one way. You didn't put degrees in the first one. Oh, I did not say degrees. That's right. She can be picky. Um, and then money. Computer, what is 10,000 yen in U.S. dollars? 10,000 Japanese yen is $91.47. So if you are having a conversation with somebody on the air and they tell you information that you would like to convert to knowledge that you have, there's a good chance she'll cover it unless you're going Fahrenheit to Celsius. <laughs> Pardon me? Or not saying degrees. Yeah, or not saying degrees. Um, she will also give you the tech questions, the general questions, and the extra questions. And then finally on here, you can, pardon me? And score you. And score you. Um, you can also open the amateur radio general study, and it will throw out a question from any of those three question pools. And she'll go through them, 
give you the options, you know, one is this, two is this, three is this, you tell it back, and she'll keep track and score you for that session. But I don't think on these uh, four that I found, five actually, that I found, that any of them does she keep score for you past each session. It's only a session at a time. That's about all I got, folks. You have any questions? Mark. Have you ever played Jeopardy with her? So yes, we have played Jeopardy with her. I, um, she's got a long intro with Jeopardy. What's one of our favorite games when we're all sitting down for dinner? We'll play Jeopardy, and it's a lot of fun. You want to come give it a try? No, I'm good, thank you. Okay. Because, <laughs> you know, you know how she's been. I'm afraid of the podium. Oh, okay, yeah. When is he ever afraid of talking? Yes, sir. How do you pick a score value or a fair safety card to use? I assume that the, uh, they're right, not there right now. You have to do something to get it. To get How do you get skills onto it? Is that what you were asking? You tell it to load a skill so you know what the name of the skill is. So what, all I would do is say computer load QR, is that? Yeah. If you know the name of the skill and there's lists of them out there, you can tell it, you know, load this skill. Or, like earlier, I called it the wrong thing. Or I asked it yesterday when I was playing around with it. I asked it to do something. I forget what it was. And she goes, I can't do that now. Do you want to load such and such skill? Yes. And then from that point on, she was able to do it. I don't know if there's a limit to how many skills she can have. I don't think so because I think that part of it, is kind of stored on the cloud, not internally to the, the device. Is she able to read information on website, go out and look at Alexa's skills, and then there? Right. That's how I go to my mind. It's either through my iPad or through the website. Yeah, and that I was getting ready to go there. So getting onto my, and I don't know if I'm hooked up onto it here or if I'm on the tablet. This will know your account. Yeah, it'll know your account. And you can open it. Right now I'm trying to go through what it's copied. It should, yeah, like when I first get into the app, it gives me suggestions on what I can have it do. But let's see. Yeah. So now it's, it's showing me, I asked it, what is 10,000 yen in U.S. dollars? And it resp responded that it was $91.47. Um, convert 37 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit, and it tells me what the answer was. So I can go through here, and at this point, it's also saying you can learn more on Wikipedia. Um, it goes through the Morse code. It's showing did da did da dit 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 dit. It does have di, di, dit, and da. It prints it kind of funny. But here's a record of everything we've done today or this evening on. Bill, one other cool thing. Um, I've set alarms and then left, and I didn't want it to be sitting there playing the alarm as well. So you can go on the app and cancel an alarm or a timer that you have going to keep it from going off if you're not there. Right. Everybody, anybody remember having speakers in your home, uh, intercom system in your home? Yes. <coughs> you can tell it to broadcast, and every device that you have of uh, Echo will broadcast in your voice what you've told it. So if it's time to eat and they're trying to get you out of the ham shack, all somebody has to do is be say, Alexa, broadcast, get your butt in here, it's time to eat. And then the next thing you hear on your Alexa sitting next to you, and every Alexa in the house except the one that was told to receive the instruction, will say, get your butt in here, it's time to eat. Or if you're not home, you can use your app to text it or send it a call to the people that are home. Yeah, I'm wondering how much I've messed up with Nigel because I've done that to my dog a few times. <laughs> Alexa, bark when I'm not around. Yeah, that's what we were saying. Yeah, and then you can also hook that up, like your sister has one. So you can talk to his sister in another town 
Absolutely. I didn't get hold I didn't touch that at all. So my sister Susan has an Alexa and I can drop in on her. Now I can't just go drop in on Susan and it'll do it. It's going to ask Susan's permission. We've got to prearrange that. And then from that point on until she turns it off, I can say drop in on Susan and it will drop in. And I can tell Susan, you know, hey, we're going to come over tonight. Yes, sir. You can also have it uh, know each different station as a zone and play music in specified zones. So everywhere or my bedroom or right. living room. Yeah, it's, it's got some cool features to it. Any other questions or comment? Yes, sir. You can, but it doesn't reset the 10 minute. You'd have to tell it again to set a 10 minute alarm or 10 minute reminder. Unless, you get, unless, you say, okay, unless, unless somebody's put a skill out there. There's, you know, what did we say, 25,000? Yeah, unless you set it up to like uh, do it six times <coughs> right. every 10 minutes and then you got to tell it to be quiet. <laughs> yeah. Over there? Yes. Say that again. The device. There's, there's not a subscription I've run across. It's just for the device, and the device does that because it's just hooking up to the Internet. I think what he's asking is what, why is there such a big price range? So the hockey puck one is a smaller, less complex device. It doesn't have a very big speaker, so it's $39. When you buy the bigger one that's got Bluetooth connectivity, it's a bigger speaker. It will provide great sound for the whole room. That's like $150, and then if it's got one that has video, it's up to 300 So just what you buy, it's like right. something else. Yeah, there, there, you know, there's different types here, and like I said, this is the hockey puck one. This is basically the one that's a previous generation of the one I've got up here, and it's, you know, the quality of the speaker. Google, this is a Google here. It's also got a smart speaker that's about this big. That's why I had the pound side. It's, it's, it's heavy. But it's about this big. And so it's got some really good sound from what I understand. I haven't broken down and bought that one. Anything else? With the uh, video cam one, it does have a video camera on it. So you can drop in from your phone and look for the living room. Yeah. Yeah. And us, if I remember right, so if you have a video doorbell, when the doorbell is activated, that pops up on that screen also. Yep. So that if you're, yeah, so if you're in your computer room or in the ham shack and somebody hits your doorbell, you get, I'm sure it's a tone that comes across, but then also you can see out that doorbell camera and see who's out there. You have to go to your app and see the doorbell. Pardon me? You have to go to your app on your phone. Oh, you have to go to the app? You can't do it through the Alexa with the screen? Okay. Yeah, I know you can do it on the app, but I'm pretty sure the, the Alexa with the screen that has the video screen on it will let you see that. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Do you have to have a smartphone? I think you do. I, I don't know. Yeah, matter of fact, when you're setting it up, you have to set it up with a smartphone. Right, tablet. Uh, the tablet's on the Wi-Fi from the house. Yeah, it's something that's sharing that Wi-Fi. So I guess if you load the app on your computer, now that you can do that more and more, that you could do it with the computer. But the smartphone or the tablet's been the way we've done all of ours. And what? And oh, so you could also go to alexa.amyroma.com instead of the Alexa app. Oh, okay. So it's just a computer. It's gotcha. Yes, sir. I have read some blogs where people were trying to set that up and people were guiding them on how to go through that. I have not seen a video showing that, but I'm pretty sure it's, there's a skill in there that it can do that. I just have not seen that function. 
They're all down for the making dinner and delivering the beer. I just saw a video yesterday of somebody set up, I don't know if it was an Alexa or Google, but it was like it was on a robot and it delivered beer. <laughs> so it's halfway there for you. They're working on it. You um, like voice interface to your rig? I have not seen anything of that, I, and I was looking for that piece of it for this to see if anybody's actually set it up for their rig. The only thing I've seen is a guy had his radio next to his Alexa and was telling his Alexa what to do through the radio. Uh, you know, that's no big trick. I've, we've put our Google next to the Alexa, and this is where you can see, I see you, Cliff. This is where you can see that Google has more of a personality than, than Alexa. When we would say, Alexa, Google is right next to you. And we didn't, she didn't say much, and she didn't, but it was more of a case of, I don't care. <laughs> Google, Alexa's next to you. Oh, I like Alexa. She's pretty. And then Alexa would respond to the, she's pretty. And so there was a you know, short conversation that went on. Yeah? <coughs> Cliff? Yeah, I could probably pull that up. We'll wrap up with that. Yes, sir. Right. So just keep in mind that although these, these things are very much fun, that you might even in fact be able to uh, get the same information by making use of the uh, voice output on your smartphone. Of course, you can also do it on your computer and, you know, through the tablet. Um, yeah, there's more than one way to skin the cat. Do we have sound coming through this system? Yeah, so we may not be able to hear this, Cliff. Here, let's see. Alexa, plug in. <laughs> I said you should change your code word for this. Pardon me? I said you should change your code word for this. <coughs> don't, don't you have the mic the over for the computer, the Alexa? <coughs> no. That's just been her. I, I jacked her up on the uh, sound. Plug that into your headphone. We'll see if that, it'll probably, hopefully it won't blow it out. I'll unplug it quickly. <laughs> All right, let's see if we get any sound here. It's not even wanting to play it. <clears throat> Make sure it's it's down low the volume. There you go. You, you should pause it until we get the sound from you now. So you don't screw it. It's not getting anything. Oh, yeah. yeah, so you need it. Yeah, it's hilarious actually. I love this one. Yeah, that's great. So <laughs> yeah, the the room's not cooperating with this. What happens if you unplug the and just put, hold your mic up to it? <coughs> the mic is just for recording. We're not going through the speakers. Uh, does the uh, Alexa have a uh, speaker jack so you can use it as a speaker? <laughs> yes. Well, it's got an output jack. You can Bluetooth into it as a speaker. Cast from my computer to the Alexa. I haven't done that yet. I don't know how to do it. Now, I, I, so there, there is a video, and if you do a Google search for old guys and Alexa, it is kind of a funny video. Um, but we just can't get the sound going, and that's kind of where you need to be for this.
Anything else? Folks, we're done. So that's all I've got. Thank you very much for coming.